Today I'll teach you how to use connection string from the app settings.json with db context in ESP.NET Core. In this video, I am using Northwind database. All the details regarding Northwind database are available in the video link available on the right hand side. So let's start. First, I will install the entity framework package. Hence, I am opening NuGet package manager console. Here, I'll paste the command for installing the package. As you can see, the package has been installed. Now, let's move to the solution explorer. Now, I'm adding a model class to the project. I'm naming the class as customer.cs. Now, I'll click on add. Here I will be creating some properties. You need to make sure that the name of the properties should match the names of the fields in the table. For example, this particular field customer ID is a string field in the database table and the name is exact copy of the column name. The second column is contact name. You need to make sure that the data type as well as the name of the column is exact match so that the entity framework can map the column to the appropriate field and fetch the data. Now we will add another class. It will be called as database context. This is more like a business class. It will have all the functions required by entity framework. So here we'll begin with addition of namespaces. So the very first namespace is of model class. Since we need to use the model class in this particular class, the next namespace is for entity framework. It's Microsoft dot entity framework core. Now here I'll inherit the entity framework core database context class or db context class so that I can use all the properties and functions here. Now I'm creating a constructor of db context class. Whatever I am doing is a standard and you will have to do in all the projects where you are using entity framework with .NET core. In ESP.NET web forms and FVC, all these classes were automatically generated by entity framework but here in .NET Core we have to manually write it. Now I am creating a public property of dbset collection. This particular collection will be of model class and this particular collection will hold the data which is fetched from database using entity framework. Now we are done with the db context class. Now I'll be opening the app settings.json class. Here I'm adding connection string to the Northwind database. As you can see, I have named the key as mycon and this particular key will be used in the startup.cs class later on to fetch this connection string. That's it, we are done with the connection string. Now again, let's move to the solution explorer. Now I'll be opening the startup.cs class. The very first thing I'll do is adding the namespace for Microsoft.entity framework core. Now I'll create a public property of type iConfiguration interface. Now inside the constructor of the startup class, I'll be initializing this configuration property which I have created. Now here I'll be calling the addMVC function as 
we are using mvc architecture in this particular project the next thing i am doing is creating a variable to store the connection string which will be fetched from the app settings.json In order to fetch the connection string, I am making use of the configuration property. The method to fetch the connection string is get connection string to which I am passing the key. Now we'll make use of the add db context function and this particular function is used to specify the database that you are using SQL server or something else and also which connection string you are using to connect to the database. So as you can see, I am making use of lambda expression and I am calling the function use SQL server to which I am passing the connection string variable. So this completes the configuration part. Now we can move to the controller class. Now I am making a private property of DB context class. Then I am creating a constructor of home controller class. And I am injecting the database context class using dependency injection into it. Now inside the action result method, I am creating a list collection of customer model class objects and this list collection will be used to send the data from the controller to the view. Now using a link query, I am fetching the top 10 records from the DB set of customers and finally this particular link query is converted to a list collection using the to list function. Now the object of the customers collection is passed to the view. Now let's add a view to the project. As you can see, I am adding an empty view. The very first thing is to inherit the model class namespace. Now I am setting the I enumerable customers collection as the model for the view. Now I am adding a heading and in which I will enter the text as customers as will be displaying the records for customers. Now I am creating an HTML table. The basic idea is to run a for loop and using for loop generate the table rows. The for loop will be executed over the model class collection. Now here as you can see I am adding header row fields to the table. Since we have four fields in a property class, so same way I am adding four columns, customer ID, contact name, city and country. Now I am writing a for each loop and this for each loop will be executed over the customer's collection. Now inside the for each loop, I am adding a table row and inside the table row, I will be adding four fields. But here, instead of static fields, they will be the fields from the property. So as you can see, the first field is customer ID. That means it will display the data of customer ID, then contact name, city and country. So with this, we are done with the program and now we can run it and see it in action. So as you can see, the data from the database has been successfully fetched using entity framework so with this we come to the end of this video thanks for watching please like share and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon goodbye